why Atlantic and Pacific Oceans don't mix. Back in high school, we were taught that about 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. 361,132,000 square kilometers, to be precise. This is easily identifiable when you look at the map of the world, as the deep blue regions clearly depict the vast five oceans of the world. Although it seems logical, you would be mistaken to think that all five oceans of the world flow into one another, forming one unified water body. In fact, despite being made entirely of the same components, H2O, water bodies do not always mix. A prime example of this is the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are the two largest oceans in the world. Together they cover half of the Earth's surface. But at the point where these two meet, the southernmost tip of the end of South America called Cape Horn, a very strange phenomenon occurs. The waters of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans refuse to mix. What is even more spectacular is that a clear distinction can be made between the two bodies of water as the lighter Atlantic waters stand next to the darker Pacific waters. This boundary between the two oceans continues for up to 800 kilometers in what is known as the Drake Passage. This stunning phenomenon, where water bodies refuse to mix, was first discovered by Jacques Cousteau when he went deep diving in the Strait of Gibraltar. This strange sight has left many onlookers quite baffled, with some ascribing the strange occurrence to some divine act, but of course that can be simply explained by basic science. So why don't the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans mix? To unravel this, we must look closely at the chemical and physical makeup of the two water bodies. The water of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans have two different densities, and this is what forms a barrier between them, making it difficult for them to mix. Merely looking at the two water bodies, a difference in color can be clearly observed, indicating a difference in the chemical makeup of both water bodies. This is the second most important factor responsible for this strange phenomenon. To get a better understanding of why water bodies will refuse to mix, we need to look at a feature called ocean clines. Ocean clines are the borders that exist between two bodies of water due to a difference in the physical and biological characteristics of the water. One of the most spectacular types of ocean cline is called haloclines. When two bodies of water with significantly different salinities come together, a haloclein is formed as the bodies of water refuse to mix. Another form of ocean cline is called a thermocline. As you might have guessed from its name, a thermocline occurs when water bodies with different temperatures come in contact with each other. They will both refuse to mix. A good example of this is the thermocline between the warm water of the Gulf Stream and the much colder water of the North Atlantic Ocean. Thermoclines are really fun because you can easily recreate them in your kitchen using hot and cold water. If you place hot and cold water in a bowl and place your hand inside the bowl, you will clearly feel a distinction between the region where the hot water is and the region where the cold water is. The difference in temperature also affects the density of the water. If you can take your mind back to science class for a moment, you'll remember that as water gets hotter, it expands and reduces in volume. And because density is inversely proportional to volume, as water expands and the volume increases, the density reduces. Cold water will therefore always be heavier than hot water. And in a bath filled with both hot and cold water, you can expect the cold water to settle at the bottom with the hot water rising to the top. Interestingly, however, this doesn't happen in thermoclines, but more on that later. A third form of ocean clines is called chemoclines. Chemoclines occur when water bodies with different microclimate and chemical makeups come in contact with each other. A very striking occurrence of a chemocline occurs in the Sargasso Sea. This is the biggest and most popular chemocline in the world. The Sargasso Sea is found within the Atlantic Ocean, yet it is without any shores. Thanks to its very different light blue color, the map of the Sargasso Sea can be easily spotted in the midst of the Atlantic Ocean. The waters of the Sargasso Sea do not mix with the Atlantic Ocean because of the chemical differences between them. So which of these ocean clines is most apparent at the border of the Pacific and Atlantic Sea? As we have earlier hinted, a halocline is what occurs where the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans meet. This is because the Atlantic Ocean is at least five times more salty than the Pacific Ocean. This difference in salinity also affects the density of the water. So how does high salinity affect the density of the water? Well, it's back to science class again. By adding salt to water and creating a salt solution, the water becomes more dense. You can test this in your kitchen. Get two glasses of water and have them filled about three quarters of the way. 
add a few tablespoons of salt in one glass and leave the other glass salt-free. Next, take two small eggs and place one egg inside each of the glasses. Immediately, you'll notice the egg sinks to the bottom of the salt-free glass, but the other egg floats in the glass of the salt solution. The reason is simple. The salted water has become heavier and thus is able to support the weight of the egg. This, however, raises a question that we have previously highlighted. Following basic science laws, a heavier mass of water should lie beneath a lighter mass of water. So in this case, we should have the water from the Pacific Ocean flow on top of the Atlantic Ocean. But clearly, this is not the case. So why does this not happen? The answer to this is a combination of two effects. The first is that the difference in density between the water from the Atlantic Ocean and that of the Pacific Ocean is negligible, and so it is not enough to create two different densities. However, it's sufficient to prevent them from mixing. Furthermore, what keeps the two water bodies standing side by side, rather than in horizontal layers, is something called the Coriolis force. The Coriolis force is one of the forces of inertia that influences the movement of objects. An example of the effect of the Coriolis force is seen on the rotation of the Earth and how it affects the movement of objects on the Earth's surface. As the Earth rotates, all the objects on the Earth are acted upon by the Coriolis force, which makes them deviate from their natural course. Instead of objects to move in a straight line, these objects are moved in a clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere and in a counterclockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. Because of this, the direction of the flow of water bodies in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are different. Rather than flow into each other, the currents of both oceans only allow the water molecules of both water bodies to touch themselves momentarily, after which they spin away from each other. Another phenomenon that prevents the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans from mixing lies in the strength of the molecule connection of the water bodies. The molecules of both water bodies hold them tightly together, making it difficult for them to mix with another body of water. In some cases where two different water bodies with different physical and chemical proportions meet, some mixing may actually take place, even though it may not appear to be the case when you look at the boundary between the two. A good example of this is where the Fraser River enters the Strait of Georgian in Vancouver, Canada. Along this boundary, fresh water from the Fraser River comes in contact with seawater from the ocean. Both water bodies have different chemical makeups. The fresh water from the Fraser River is full of silts, while the denser, clear blue water from the ocean has a high salinity. On the surface, the two water bodies do not appear to mix. However, beneath the boundary, mixing actually takes place. As the fresh water from the Fraser River comes in contact with the seawater, it loses its brown murkiness and becomes clear, just like the seawater. The brown murkiness of the fresh water is a result of the suspended particle sediments of silt and clay contained in the water. As the salt in the seawater comes in contact with these suspended particles in the freshwater, they stick together and form a bond. The particles then become heavier, just like the test with water and salt we did in the kitchen. And because they're heavier, they sink to the bottom of the ocean, making the water clearer. This interaction continues to take place as the freshwater and seawater slowly mix. This results in a sharply defined mixing zone that is different from the vertical boundary that it appears to have. In reality, the line of freshwater rises over the denser seawater. This leaves a sloped boundary under the water surface where mixing takes place as the particles on the water body's bond become heavier and drop to the bottom of the ocean. It is not clear whether this sort of masked mixing occurs between the water bodies of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, but it is rather unlikely. There are a host of other notable places around the globe where two water bodies refuse to mix when they come in contact with each other. Here are three prominent instances. North and Baltic Seas The North and Baltic Seas meet near the Danish city of Skagen. At the point where they meet, the waves of both seas can be seen clashing into each other. Initially, initially, mixing does not take place due to the different densities of the water bodies. However, it has been concluded that the two water bodies eventually mix over time. This is what increases the salinity of the otherwise freshwater Baltic Sea the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. The Mediterranean Sea meets the Atlantic Ocean near the Antilles and also near the Eutheria Island of the Bahamas. The fact that these two water bodies do not mix is clearly seen from the different colors of the seas. The Caribbean Sea is turquoise in color while the Atlantic Ocean is dark blue. Rio Negro and Salimos Rivers Just six miles from the Manuas in Brazil, 
the Rio Negro and the Salimos River run into each other, but for a stretch of about two to five miles, the rivers do not mix. This is because a thermocline occurs along their boundary as the two water bodies have different temperatures and different flow speeds. Comment down below your thoughts, give this a like, share with your friends, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to keep you updated for more interesting facts, tips, and ideas from Smartville.